Diplodocus, and Carbonemis, and why your internet connection is really going to matter. Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokefutter and today we are going to talk about a head-to-head -head battle between Carbonemis and Diplodocus, Diplodocus, let me know down in the comments below how do you pronounce this one. This one more than any of the previous matchups that I've done is going to be based on more or less whose internet connection is faster. We're not here to debate what is a good way to settle speed ties. That doesn't matter because the way that it's settled is which one gets their move, their command, their attack registered to the system faster. That's all that matters. If you don't like it, that's what you have to work with. It's not gonna change before this weekend. So you better be prepared for it as it stands now. And unlike the previous videos that I did of this style where we go head to head, dino versus dino, this one there are so, so many different plays that can happen, so many different variables that I can't even come close to showing every single thing that could possibly happen during this like slug fest for lack of a better word. There are a couple things I wanna remind you guys of before we get into the tail of the tape and then the battle videos. And that is, these are played in a vacuum. Level 26, no boosts. Additionally, crits are part of the game. When these scenarios are being factored and played out, crits are not taken into account, even though yes, there are percentage chances that they will happen. And as you will see in the final video of today, a situation where Carbon Demi should have won the battle was actually switched into a Diplodocus win because of a crit. And as always, I want to say thank you to IDG, T, and T-Rex over at Apex Predators for putting this together. And additionally, I want to say thank you to Tridemption and his wife, Panda, for running the battle scenarios. So without further ado, let's check out the head-to-head -head matchup between these two bruisers. As we look at the tail of the tape between these two, it's kind of shocking that it's even as close as it is, except for the very last stat of the columns here. You will see that Diplodocus has almost 100% more health, 6,000 to 3540. The attack, 1,300 for Diplodocus compared to just 900 for Carbonemis. They both have speeds of 104 like we already talked about, and they both have 5% crit chances. The ultimate equalizer here for Carbonemis that makes it stand up to any of these big tanks and really speedsters alike is going to be the 60% armor. That's right, the highest armor percentage in the game. As I alluded to earlier, if you are the Carbonimis user and you know you have the faster Wi-Fi, this first scenario is going to be for you. You don't have to be faster on the first turn, but you have to be faster on the last turn. What you're gonna wanna do is open with superior vulnerability. That's gonna set you up for later in the battle. Your opponent, Diplodocus, is probably going to go shielding advantage here, in which case you want to follow up with a dig in. Decelerating Rampage is probably going to be your Diplodocus opponent's best next move that's going to give him the speed advantage for the next turn, at which time they should use their shielding advantage. Now, as the Carbonimis user, you want to use Devastation to follow this up. Diplodocus is going to use its Decelerated Rampage once again to gain the speed lead over you, in which case, as the Carbon Nimis user, you want to follow up with Superior Vulnerability. That's gonna create the speed tie at the end. This is the one that is most important to you as the Carbon Nimis user. You want to go with Devastation and you wanna be fast about doing so. If you are able to get the speed lead, your devastation is going to prove to be victorious. Our second scenario is for the Diplodocus user who has the faster internet. Carbonimis is going to be able to do a lot of damage, but it's not going to be able to win. As the faster of the two, Diplodocus is going to use shielding advantage to open up. It's going to be countered by Carbonimis using superior vulnerability, followed by dig in. Now Diplodocus is going to reclaim the speed lead at this point with a decelerating rampage and then follow that up with a shield advantage. This is going to provide just a little bit of armor against the big hits from Carbon Nimis. Carbon Nimis at this point is going to follow with superior vulnerability, giving it back the speed lead and 
dropping a Devastation, which is a three times attack. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough as Decelerating Rampage is going to be the next play from your Diplodocus user, followed by a Shield Advantage move that is going to secure the victory. And finally, the third situation is Carbonimis should win this if Diplodocus user goes with Decelerating Rampage on its first turn. Carbonimis has the advantage. The problem is crits are a part of the game. So in this example here, Carbonimis is going to win the initial speed tie, go superior vulnerability. Like I mentioned, Diplodocus is going to follow with a Decelerating Rampage. Carbonimis is then going to follow with superior vulnerability and Diplodocus has no other options except for to go with Shielding Advantage. Carbonimis will follow with a Dig In. Diplodocus will do a Decelerating Rampage to take the speed lead and then Shielding Advantage in this particular instance provided the knockout. Now what should have happened was Carbonimis went with Superior Vulnerability and then followed with a Devastation that gave it the win. Crits are a part of the game that can't necessarily be accounted for but can sway what would normally take a victory out of player one's hands and actually give it to player two. And I just want to say it again, this particular matchup has so many variables that it is impossible to list everything out. These are probably three of the most common scenarios that you will find yourself in this weekend when battling in the tournament. And if you know how they should play out, if you study these moves, write them down on a piece of paper, then you will know if I'm the faster of the two, here's what I should do. If I'm the slower of the two, then here's the move set that I should do to do the most damage before I get knocked out. But always keep in mind that you could get a lucky crit and take home a victory when you probably shouldn't. And if you want to see some live battles from this weekend's tournament, you can follow me on Twitch. There are links down in the description below. I'm streaming over there Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm kind of in a beta period for my Twitch stream simply because I've got some new layouts and things and overlays and fun stuff happening that I'm working on. So we've kind of have a little makeshift making things work before we start fancying it up, but it's going to look really whenever it's done for sure. And since I don't have a set schedule of when I'm going to stream, make sure that you are following me on Twitter. Links as always are in the description below. That way you will be alerted as to when I go live. Additionally, there's a link down in the description for 50 free hard cash from Ludia. They provide that to me to give to you guys as a token of appreciation. So if you haven't claimed that, they are good once per week then go ahead and claim that. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up while you're here. Go ahead and subscribe and turn on the alert notifications so you know when the next YouTube video pops up. And that's all I've got for this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time. And I have to amend something that I said in last week's video when I was talking about the upcoming tournaments. Actually, Epic Hybrids are not going to be part of the next two tournaments. So I misspoke there. So your Yoshi is not going to help you out. But that doesn't change the fact that Proceratosaurus is still the most obvious choice of what to go for, unless you're working